Labs are super important as the units in which science happens. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how you, as a postdoc or a PhD student, can contribute to your lab's health, productivity and success. Now, the tone for a lab is very often set, of course, by the PI, but you shouldn't underestimate what you can contribute as a student or a postdoc to make the lab a more productive place, a healthier place and also a more exciting place in which to work. Now, many of these points I'm going to talk about are not purely altruistic. They also make it better for you. And actually, in many cases, they take very little effort. Have a mindset of always wanting to improve the lab. Think about how the lab could work better and make constructive suggestions for the path to make the lab better all the time. I, as a PI, love it when people do that because it shows me that they think about how to make this place work better and more efficiently or safer or have it more fun to be around and therefore we have in the past very often uh, really realized some of the suggestions that I've been getting from people in the lab. One example is for example how we run the lab meetings with um, over the years modified them very many times and it's always been um, basically in response to suggestions from people on how to make them run more efficiently. Spread your skills, share your knowledge with others in the lab. Uh, this can, for example, take place in the form of little workshops that you organize. We've had this done repeatedly in the lab. It was super successful. People loved it. Um, it required relatively little effort on the side of the people who did these workshops. It's still effort, of course, but these are people that had, for example, just mastered a certain technique for example, a statistical technique or a lab method. And then it just basically took putting that knowledge in the form of a little workshop or a presentation and to share it with people. Over the time, I've had these um, student or postdoc driven workshops on a wide range of topics, including time management, including R markdown, so the statistical techniques or also a variety of different lab techniques. Now, I think this is great because it, it creates an atmosphere of sharing and it also reflects, of course, extremely well on you as the person who has, you know, gone through the effort of working up the topic and presenting it in an attractive way to people and getting the other people engaged. And, of course, you profit also in the sense that other people will see you as an expert for this particular topic and will seek your advice later on or invite you to be a collaborator on their own projects. You could organize co-working sessions. And this entails setting up either a physical or an online space where you meet up and you co-work or you co-write together. Now, I must admit, I haven't done that myself until very, very recently when I did this in one of my courses. We basically had the cameras on, it was online, and just the fact that the camera was on, it provided a certain level of accountability, and when one and a half hours had passed, I was frankly astonished how much I had actually written and achieved. Basically, just by virtue of the fact that I knew that other people were, you know, that my camera was on. I'm not sure the other people even watched them. I didn't watch them, but it was just this, this accountability that we were in that same space together. And I think this is particularly important because some stages of uh, research can feel very isolating, like data analysis or writing that discussion section or whatever. And by being in it together with others, I think it can really help your motivation and make it all better. And in the end, I think when things didn't work out so great in a session, you're probably going to find that also other people only wrote two sentences. And so it makes you overall feel better. Now, organizing these co-working sessions, I think, doesn't take a lot of effort. All it takes you to is to set up like a time and sort of like, let's meet then and there and let's work together on our discussion section or on our introduction section. So I think this is very low threshold, but I think it has a, a lot of benefits. And people in the lab have been doing that quite a lot. You could help out with onboarding, so showing new people around, introducing them to other people, showing them different parts of the lab. So I think by you know, taking on part of this task, showing people around, making them feel welcome, I think is, is a great contribution to a lab 
And this way, of course, you get to know people. Um, they will recognize you as somebody, the new people will recognize you as somebody who knows their way around, and so they might ask you things in the future, and you might also this way have one a collaborator. So everybody wins. And again, this probably takes super little of your time and is just a question of you taking the initiative. Now, helping people out generally is also incredibly valuable. I mean, very often people in the lab, for example, set up experiments or studies that are very hard at certain phases to master by themselves. So they are basically dependent on other people volunteering their time to help them out, for example, during harvests or some critical points in the setup of an experiment. And so be one of these people. Sure, it takes out <laughs> several hours, maybe of your day or maybe a day. But in the end, when it's your turn to set up an experiment that has a time-consuming aspect to it, I think you will be <laughs> finding that other people will be more willing to help you if you helped, helped others before. So I think this is also low threshold. You don't need to organize anything. You just basically volunteer your time and you show that you're a team player. And over time, you can really build up a reputation in the lab. I have observed this people that are very generous with their time, that help um, people on all kinds of tasks. They achieve a certain status in the lab. And I think this is a very positive thing and helps everybody. Now, lab meetings are some of the most important things that we do. And I've made previous videos about that. And lab meetings are another point where with just very little effort uh, and a minimum of preparedness, <laughs> you can basically make great contributions to the team, for example, by having critically thought about an issue and offering a nice viewpoint during a discussion or by, well, saying nice things, complimenting other people about their point that they have made. It all takes very little effort, but it creates an um, a very pleasant and productive atmosphere. And sometimes it takes very little to make the lab meetings more interesting. For example, you have recently attended, let's say, a conference, and so you could just have a brief report on what interesting talks you saw in the conference. Or you attended a workshop, and you can just basically share some of the salient points of that workshop with the group as a whole. Of course, you can also always report on your progress, maybe, um, this can be just a five-minute thing or a ten-minute thing, so people know what you're doing. Um, you could use this as a platform to invite people to collaborate with you. All this makes lab meetings more productive, more interesting, more team-oriented. And very often from our lab meetings, very regularly, I should say, from our lab meetings, every year there are papers that we publish that arise directly from discussions we've had in lab meetings when, you know, we got off on an interesting tangent or um, ideas were created by the joint discussion. So I think this is also a way how you in the end can profit from that. In addition to honing your discussion skills and in an academic setting, I think you might be in the end also be one that directly profits from some of the outcomes of this discussion. For example, in the case of a viewpoint paper or opinion paper that came out of the, one of these meetings. Now, if your lab doesn't have a lab meeting yet, maybe this is one thing that you can do. I think that takes a lot of effort, of course, to set it up. <clears throat> but once it's running, I think then it becomes easier to sort of organize these sessions. So if you don't have a lab meeting in your meeting, I'd encourage you to set one up. Maybe also together with other groups that share similar interests. Just take a general interest in the operation of the lab is also a valuable contribution. Like you are aware that things need to be ordered, for example, when they run out. So when things are running low, you alert the staff that things should be ordered. For example, it's a simple task, but it makes it better for everybody. Or that, you know, you take care that the workspaces always are kept clean and tidy. This is also an important contribution. Super little effort, um, but you make it better for everybody. And if everybody does it, of course, you profit as well. Now, this can also go a step further, for example, that you think about more critically how things could get organized better, to be more environmental friendly, to be safer, to be more efficient, to be more cost effective, for example. This is something that will probably arise over time, but making that suggestion itself also will cost very little effort. Now, tech updates. If, you, if you're a tech geek and you hang out in online forums where they discuss the latest app or um, tools for online communication or whatever, I think you can also add a lot to the lab. 
um, and the functioning of the lab by just briefing people on what you have learned. So if this is your interest, you should share that knowledge. And this has really been, I would say, transformative. And it was a, basically a suggestion from a postdoc a number of years ago that we should use one of those online communication tools. We use Slack, for example, and it's completely changed the way we communicate. I think it's made it orders of magnitude more efficient and better for everybody. But it was because somebody was just hanging out in the forums or had seen that someplace else and just brought that suggestion to the lab. And so you can be that person. <laughs> it takes very little. Uh, if this is what you're doing anyway, if you're interested in online things or tools or apps. And then, you know, if you have a good suggestion, just bring it to the lab. Well, and then finally, you could contribute to social events. You know, of course, by being there in the first place <laughs> when somebody else organizes it, but maybe over time you also want to contribute to these lab meetings in a more active uh, fashion, like these lab outings, like you could start organizing parts of it, you could motivate people to attend, you could think of fun things to do, you could uh, contribute ideas. Now, this is, of course, just fun <laughs> to hang out with other people, but it's interesting to get to know people in a non-work atmosphere. So maybe you discover things that you have in common and that overall increases the team spirit and improves the way that whole operation runs. And of course, if the lab is relatively large, like ours, you might take that opportunity to talk to people that you're not normally talking to and that may give rise to completely new opportunities for collaboration and for thinking about stuff together. Now, this definitely increases team cohesiveness. It makes it all more fun and I think it takes very little effort to just contribute to these things and show that you're engaged. So these are my eight suggestions for how you can contribute to making a lab more fun, productive, more efficient and just a better place and a better place for doing science. Now, if you have other suggestions, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.